Oh, come on, how nice to be here. Uh, well done to you people for sitting down the front. That takes a certain sort of bravery, doesn't it? Like, um, you don't know what I'm going to say to you, I don't know what you're going to say to me. It's awkward, it's difficult talking to people. When I was growing up, my parents used to say, Andrew, don't talk to any creepy-looking men. The irony now, of course, is I'm a creepy-looking man. <laughs> Children are not allowed to talk to me. <laughs> I was, uh, this afternoon, I saw a small boy bouncing a ball up and down in his front garden. He looked up at me, he smiled, he said, Hello! Part of me was touched, but there was another part of me thought, How impertinent for a small boy to dress an adult in that way. I said, Throw me the ball! He threw me the ball, I kicked it as hard as I could across the road into a skip. And he said, My ball, why did you do that? I said, Because life is hard, my little friend. <laughs> and so that was number one. <laughs> And his mother came running out of the house screaming like, What the hell are you doing here? You're only supposed to see him on weekends. <laughs> <laughs> it's, nice. it's nice to be in Scotland. All the Scottish people give me a cheer. Yay! I like it. It's nice, especially compared to some of the other third world countries. I think it compares... <laughs> Very favourably. I, um, I got the train up. I love the trains. When I was a kid, I used to um, have model train sets. So I used to pretend I was a train driver making those smug, sarcastic announcements those train drivers make, like, um, please move right down inside the carriage. Please move right down inside the carriage. Allow other people to invade your personal space. <laughs> please do ram yourself up against all the windows and doors. Allow your physical boundaries to be encroached upon. <laughs> Till you're inadvertently dry humping a stranger. <laughs> Please do eat some stinky, disgusting food with your mouth open. Drop half of it on the floor to sit there rotting for the rest of the week. Please do swing a large, bulky bag over your shoulder. Smack everyone in the face with it as you leave the train. Please do block the aisle with enormous push chairs full of screaming, ugly, dirty children who should have been abandoned at birth. <laughs> Please do be entirely unable to operate our automated toilet door. Have it swing back as a parade of school children walk past. <laughs> to reveal you hideously mid-crap with all your bits and pieces hanging out like a farmyard animal. <laughs> Welcome to ScotRail. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll get you where you need to go. <laughs> Dude, I've got a train. I've got a train up this year and um, uh, it's packed and the lady got on, I thought she was pregnant. There were no free seats. I got up, I said, would you like my seat? She said, I'm not pregnant, actually. That's awkward, isn't it? I said, what difference does that make? I know lots of people who aren't pregnant, they all like having a nice sit down. Especially the fat ones. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's easily done, though, isn't it? It's so easy to say the wrong thing. I am... Um... I was at a late night gig on Saturday doing one of these late night Edinburgh festival gigs. I was on first and then I went and stood at the back of the room to watch the other comedians. At the end of the gig I was walking back to the green room, a lady from the crowd grabbed me, asked me to get one of the comedians for her. So I went into the green room, I said to the comedian, there's a lady out there who wants to talk to you. He said, oh yes, yeah, Skylar wanted to turn our tractor, is she? I said, I don't really want to put a number on it, that's a little bit crass, but if I had to, I'd probably say no more than a three. He said, oh, all right, then he went out to talk to her. Turns out it's his wife. That's embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a, a privilege and a light. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs>